the origin of printed books dates to the year 1440, when Johann Gutenberg invented movable type and the printing press. And the modern printed book as we know it was born 576 years ago. A lot has happened since then. We all know that history is written in books, but history also happens because of books. Religious reformations, political revolutions, scientific discoveries, all announced or incited by words that first appeared on the printed page. And yet, just a few years ago, despite all that history in books and brought on by books, printed books themselves almost became history. Ebooks were supposedly taking over. Their sales were rapidly accelerating, and it seemed like the long, successful run of Gutenberg's invention might be nearing the end of its useful life. From 2008 to 2012, ebooks sold more and more copies, and they were projected to surpass the sales of print books within a few years, by 2017. Encyclopedia Britannica announced in 2010 that that year's edition would be their last in print. From then on, it was digital access only. What, after all, is the purpose of this stack of paper with words printed on it, when you can get the same words online, wherever and whenever you want? And then, things started to level off. Print fought back. It was like a global realization set in, that there's something kind of valuable in this old technology. That ebooks have their use, but they're not a replacement for all printed books. Anyone who's been in a bookstore recently knows how much more impressive printed books have become in recent years in response to their existence becoming threatened. It's like they heard rumors of their impending extinction and made themselves more desirable and attractive. Think about a printed book you have at home. It could be your favorite book or just the first book that comes to mind. What do you think of when you think of that book? Is it the plot? or a character, or something about that book's relationship to you. If you thought about your favorite Jane Austen or Hemingway novel, perhaps it's a feeling of holding that book in your hands. Maybe a sense of where on the printed pages a favorite scene or a passage is located. Maybe it's a memory of who you were dating when you first read that book. Printed books have the power to transport us through space and time. When I think about my favorite books, the first one that comes to mind is The Catcher in the Rye. And being 13 years old, riding the Third Avenue bus to school, holding this exact copy, it was a little younger then, and so was I. And I was heading uptown, it was a rainy autumn morning, and I became so engrossed in the story of Holden Caulfield that I missed my bus stop. Now compare this to ebooks if you have read one, or think of your favorite one, or just something that you've consumed on your device via the cloud. It's a little different, right? Do you picture where you were when you read the book? What the device felt like holding it in your hands as you scrolled through the pages? Do you picture where in your list of downloads that book is? Maybe it's after the Malcolm Gladwell and before that trashy romance novel you download in the middle of the night? We buy books to read them, to digest the stories they contain, to be entertained, to learn something new. But why do we keep printed books? When I look at my bookshelves, I'm reminded of the stories I fell in love with as a kid, the subjects I studied in college, how these books were so important to me that I took them with me from apartment to apartment, house to house in and out of boxes, on and off the shelves. These books are my story. I didn't write a single one of them, but they're my story, the story of who I am. When we add books, any printed books to our shelves, something magical happens. We combine the author and their story with us and our story. And the result is a new story, and it's completely original. Like our DNA, the combination of books we keep cannot be replicated. Even if others have the exact same books as us, their books have different meaning to them. By holding books in our hands for hours as we read them, then making a specific place for them on our shelves, we develop associations that last forever. 
where we were when we bought the books, who we were when we read the books, where we keep our books and how we organize them. The books we keep are about a lot more than just the stories on their pages or the titles on their spines. At the end of the day, and the beginning of the day too, we live in a physical world. No matter how much technologists try to convince us that we can digitize our entire existence and store everything we own in the cloud, this is not the matrix. Human beings are not computer code. We live in buildings and houses. And in the real world, we have to make choices about what to keep. We can't keep unlimited amounts of stuff. We have to decide what to keep and where to put it. We choose whether to keep a copy of Wuthering Heights or a biography of Winston Churchill, whether to give away that book about dog breeds that Aunt Alice gave you, or acquire a first edition of a beloved childhood classic. These are acts of conscious choice, but also of creative expression. Anyone who sees your books isn't just seeing the creative output of the authors who wrote the books, they're seeing the story of who you are written across your bookshelves through the books that you keep. When we add a book to our shelves, it's more than a book. It becomes like a placeholder, a reminder, an invitation, until we come back to it at any time, perhaps to reread it, or just to think about it as we pass by, or maybe respond to a guest who notices it and asks, I didn't know you were interested in philosophy. Walk into any stranger's home anywhere in the world and want to know something about them or what to talk about over dinner. Simply look at their bookshelves. When we merge our books with a partner's or perhaps add children to the house, our books take on new meaning, serving to tell the story not just of who we are and where we've been, but that of the entire family and our future. We could choose to keep other things on our shelves, fossils, perhaps. They make really nice bookends, actually. But nothing serves to tell the story of who we are, where we've been, and where we're going, like the books that we keep. The origin of printed books and all of the stories they tell can be traced back to Gutenberg and his invention 576 years ago. Fast forward to the present day, and it seems like time is simply accelerating. We have less and less of it. Our focus shifts second by second. We scroll through our friends' updates on Facebook and Instagram quickly to get the story. We get impatient when a movie or a song takes too long to download. Who has time to read a book? That takes hours. Who has time to write a book? That takes years. But when we look up from our phones at our bookshelves, we're reminded that we once had time to read every one of those books, 10 or 20 hours with each one. When we look up from the movie we're watching at our books, we're reminded that every one of those books took an author years to write. We could look at our books and all the time that they represent and just feel overwhelmed, but we aren't. Printed books make us feel comfortable. They make us feel like everything is gonna be okay. As human beings, time starved and rushing around, printed books are a reminder of the time we once had, the time we want to have, the time we hope to have. As as long as there are printed words on a page, they will tell a story. And so long as there are printed books on the shelf, they will tell a story. The books we keep are the stories we tell. It's easy to take printed books for granted. It's old technology, but it's good technology. And whether the books are in our hands or on the shelves, whether their covers are open or shut, they keep on telling stories. And so should we.